today we're going to walk through how to implement a side menu in Ionic 2 and we're also going to talk about how to highlight a specific uh, menu item based on what page the user is currently on. To do this we're going to use the uh, default side menu template that Ionic 2 provides so we're going to talk through how that works, uh, how the menu works in general and then we're going to get into uh, implementing this active highlighting feature. So to start off with we're just going to generate a new Ionic 2 application using the Ionic start command and we're going to call this one Ionic 2 side menu highlight and as I mentioned we're going to use the side menu template that Ionic 2 provides through the command line interface and make sure also to supply the v2 flag to so that we generate a v2 project and we'll just let that generate now okay so that's finished uh, generating now so I'm going to change into that project and I'm just going to serve it now so we can take a look at what we have to work with so far okay so this is the app that's automatically generated for us we just have a page here and then we have a side menu already set up so I can click on this uh, menu toggle button here and you can see we've got page one and page two set up uh, so that's all automatically generated for us and so what we're going to do is of course explain how this menu works and how you could modify that but also we're going to make it so that when I click on page two page two is going to remain highlighted you can see when I click it there it turns grey so we want to make it so it stays grey for as long as they're in page two and when they go to page one, that's going to be highlighted instead. Uh, so I'm going to open up the project in Sublime now and we'll get to work. Okay, so I've got the project open now. Uh, we're going to start off by looking at the inside the app folder. Uh, this is where the side menu gets set up in the uh, root component uh, of the application and the, uh, the template for that here. Uh, so as you can see, we've got a bunch of code here generated already uh, that's making that menu work for us. So we'll start off explaining the template here. Uh, so we've got the ion nav down here, which uh, if you're familiar with the normal structure of an Ionic 2 project, you'll see this in, in every application you build. Uh, so this sets up the root page, which links uh, in here. You can see we set up the root page as page one. Uh, so that's gonna be the first page the user sees. But then we also have this ion menu component set up, which we don't usually have. And so how this works is basically we're just using the ion menu component uh, using the ion menu tag and then we set up this content property uh, on that component and so if you look down here you can see we've set up a reference to content here so this menu is referencing this ion nav uh, because that's where the main content for our application is and that's what we're attaching this menu to and then inside of the ion menu here this is the the content for our menu and so you can see we are creating a well two buttons now uh, using this uh, ng4 here so this is looping over an array of pages that we have defined in the app.component.ts file and for each of those pages it's creating a button uh, that's going to trigger this open page function so if I jump back into the app.component.ts file now you can see that this is where those uh, that page array pages array is defined um, so we've got two objects in this array uh, page one and page two so we've got the title of the page and then the component that that page is using so that's page one and page two are set up as the components here uh, so that's just like how we assign page one as the root page here uh, we need a reference to that component if we want to set it as the as the page that we're currently viewing and that's what this open page function does. So we're using the set root function and we are just grabbing that component property from the page uh, in that array. So when someone clicks on one of these buttons that are getting generated from that pages array, it's going to pass in a reference to the, uh, the current page to this open page function. And that, uh, that page is gonna get passed through to here and then we call set root and we grab the component of that page which will either be page one or page two and I just want to point out one more uh, weird thing here and that's this uh, our pages member variable we've got set up we have this weird type defined um, so that's the type just like any is a type here 
uh, but this is just defining it as specifically as an array that contains objects that are made up of uh, a title which is a string and a component which can be anything so this is just a really specific type definition you could easily just have this as any as well that's not really important of course there are benefits to having specific types like this as well but we're not going to get into that in this tutorial so now we've gone through the basics of how a menu works and how we could extend that um, you could just easily import page 3 page 4 here add them to that pages array and they'll get added to the menu uh, so what we want to do now is implement that active menu highlighting feature and it's going to be pretty straightforward so what we're going to do is create another member variable up here and we're going to call it active page and we'll just give that a type of any and what we're going to do is when we change a page we're going to set the active page on this variable and we're going to be able to check against that later so in the open page function what I want to do now is also set this dot active page to equal uh, the page that is being passed in so now when the user changes the page this active page uh, member variable is going to get set uh, but we also need to deal with the case of when they are first uh, in the application before they've changed the page we also need to make sure that the active page is set so I'm going to come in here as well and set the active page to be the first page in that pages array and so that's the same one we're setting up as the root page here is page one so that's why I'm using that first um, element there if we had page two as a root page then you should put uh, the second element uh, as the active page instead. So now we have a value uh, variable that stores what the current active page is. So now we need a way uh, for this menu, for the menu items to make use of that. And so what we're going to do is create uh, a conditional style that we apply. Uh, so I'll create that first. So if I jump into the app.scss file, I'm just going to create a class called uh, active highlight and then we're just going to assign a background color of uh, whatever the light color is that is defined in the variables here uh, in the colors map so we're going to come in here and just say map get and we're going to get one of the values from the colors map and we want that to be the light value so that's just going to grab this color uh, if you prefer you can just as easily set uh, a color directly here rather than using uh, that colors map. So now we have a class that we can apply to the, uh, one of the menu, uh, the buttons in the menu to change their background color uh, which will indicate that they are the active page. So now we're going to have to apply that conditionally to this button depending on whether or not that the, the specific page is the active one. And we're going to do that by using the following syntax. We can use the property binding syntax here to conditionally apply that class. So we're going to do class dot active highlight. And I do have a tutorial, another video tutorial on this, and I also have a blog post which I'll link. Uh, so if you want to find out more about how these conditional classes and styles work, uh, you can check that out. So what we're going to do for this is assign that to. Uh, we're going to use a function called. Uh, check active and we'll pass in a reference to the page there and so what this is going to do if this evaluates to be true then that class is going to be applied if it evaluates to false then that class won't be applied and so we're going to pass in a reference to that specific page to this check active function and then we're going to figure out whether or not that page is active so if I come back into here now I'll just save that as well so in here we're going to define that check active function and we pass in that reference to the page just like we did with the open page function and now all I need to do is check if that page matches up to the current active page so I can just return page equals uh, this dot active page so that's going to check if uh, the page that is passed in matches this and if it does that's going to return uh, return true if it doesn't it's going to return false and so that should have the effect of applying this class conditionally uh, only if it is the, the active um, page so I'll save that and we'll jump in 
to the browser now and see if we haven't broken everything. Okay, so we have the app loaded now. I'll open up the menu and you can see very faintly, but you can see that the page one uh, button here has a light gray background. So if I click on page two now and take a look at it, now page two has the light gray background. And so it's working basically. So whatever page is currently active is going to have that light gray background. Uh, I don't know how well that's gonna show up in the video. So what I might do is instead of using the light color, I'll use uh, the danger color, which is gonna be a lot more obvious. So I'll just repeat that example there, open that up, you can see page one is highlighted. I click page two, that becomes highlighted. Click page one again, it goes back to that. Uh, so that's working. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you didn't already know how to use the side menu, hopefully this helped explain that. And also, hopefully you found the information around how to conditionally apply a class like this to be useful as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.